Hey everybody, uh, my name is Joseph Puckett with Craig Wiggins Agency and Craig Wiggins Coaching. Thank you guys so much for joining us for today's call. Uh, I'm joined today by the one and only Mr. Craig Wiggins and, and our very special guests, Justin Slocum, Mark Mercer, Greg Blanchard, and Todd McLean. Craig's gonna introduce them a bit more in a moment. For now, housekeeping. So a couple things. First, if you see the chat function on Zoom, don't use it. And if you've already been chatting with us, go ahead and close it out. What I want you to do is click on the Q&A box, a little Q&A function at the bottom of Zoom, and feel free to submit questions all throughout the call as Craig's interviewing each of these four awesome people talking about how they're crushing sales and using various lead sources at their agencies. Feel free to ask questions all throughout the call. We're looking at around 50 to 60 minutes of discussion, talking, interviewing, and all of that. And then the last 30 minutes or so will be your questions. And I'm just gonna say this now. I have a feeling we're gonna get lots of questions. I'm gonna do my best to make sure that I moderate them well, to ask them to Craig and to others. I'm gonna to try to get to every question. What I'll say right now is if we don't get to your question and it's not answered in a roundabout way from another question, feel free to reach out to me or Craig. So Craig, oh no, I'm not you yet. Not I wanna be one day, Joseph <laughs> at CraigWigginsCoaching.com or Craig at CraigWigginsCoaching.com. I just don't want anybody upset if we don't get to your question, but we sure will try. So use the Q&A box. Um, we're looking at about a 90 minute call and I'm so excited to have you all today. <laughs> Absolutely. We're really, really looking forward to this event, um, mainly because it's just such a big topic that's on so many people's minds with everything that's going on, not necessarily just with your company, but in our industry as a whole. Um, and the topic for the event is really to drive down acquisition costs. What can we do to generate more business by spending less money or you keep the amount of money you're spending the same, but we just do more of it. You know, so we end up with a lot more profit at the end of the year. So we've got some people on here that are really good friends of mine, but are also doing a fantastic job in their agencies with different areas. And we're kind of going to go through each one of them, have some conversation with them. And then like Joseph said, do some Q and A at the very end. And, and I picked these guys because I feel like they have a lot of value to offer because they've done things maybe a little bit different or a little bit unique uh, to help you drive these costs down. There's so much opportunity in agencies all over the country, whether it's with, your existing customers, whether it's with vendors that you're working with now, um, staff, you know, getting more out of them. There's so much more that we could be doing that a lot of times you just need to kind of hear from somebody else or maybe pick up an idea or you might hear an idea and then you kind of make it your own later on today or tomorrow. And, and that's helping you in another way as well. So the whole point of this is to help you guys drive down costs. What can we do to drive down costs where we write more business or more profitable, we grow faster, do it a lot more efficiently, and then everybody wins, us, our employees, you know, everybody in the organization. So that's the point. That's the whole topic of today's call. And we're going to start with Greg Blanchard. Um, and, and just to be really transparent with you guys, I'm not going to go through a full rundown of all their bios because, honestly, I know that most of you really don't care about everything that's happened in their life. <laughs> what I'll tell you is Greg started from scratch like me, has multiple locations all over Florida, tons of employees, right, and a lot of business, has done it the right way, great reputation, and what he's here to talk about today is what he's done with COIs to generate referrals from mortgage companies and realtors, because that's always such a hot topic in any of the events that we do, whether it's the workshops here or live events, it always comes up, you know, how do I get more centers of influence? How do I get more people in the mortgage business or real estate business to send leads my way? Because as we know, and there's not a lot of cost involved in that other than your time. So, you know, I brought Greg in because I want him to go through this with you guys and talk about some of the successes he's had, maybe some of the failures as well. He may cover both. Just kind of go through the way he's done this for so long and continues to do this today to build his agency. And I guarantee you there's gonna be some nuggets in there that you can take away from that. So, so Greg, I'm gonna turn it over to you and give you a few minutes just to kind of, if you wanna get a little more intro on yourself, that's fine. But I really wanna get to the information. What can we do to share information, to help everybody on this call do a better job with centers of influence like you have? So. The floor is yours, my friend. Hey, guys. Uh, thanks very much for passing that over uh, to me. I think, first of all, I wanted to uh, say congratulations to everybody that's attending the webinar, um, to take time out of your day to be able to listen to like-minded individuals around you is very, very important. And if, if it's one thing that I learned about business a long time ago is listen to people that are doing it more successfully than you are, right? So um, that's a great way to kick off this webinar. So. 
I'll give you a brief overview of who I am and what I'm all about. Um, I'm in South Florida. We have three agencies. We've got about uh, 11,500 policies in force. Um, I started with Allstate in 2007. Uh, like, like Craig said, I started from scratch really with zero customers. I didn't know anything about insurance. And, and uh, the first of probably 12 policies. Um, back in those days, really no agents had any type of platform to be able to share ideas with. Unfortunately, when I went to other agents back in the early days, nobody wanted to share the information because they thought it was a, um, a, a well-kept secret. But what they didn't realize is that the more that a specific brand of agency owner does better, you know, all the ships rise together. So I think, you know, the, the important thing now that the agents that have uh, up and coming uh, businesses now need to understand is there's help everywhere out there. The platform's fantastic. Mentors are all around. And guys like me that have been in the business 12 years, uh, we really do take our time to try to give back. So don't be afraid to, you know, reach out to that person that's doing really, really well and just say, hey, would you, would you mind if I bought, you know, bothered you for some of your time? And most people that are successful will gladly open the door to you. So, you know, when Craig asked me kind of to speak about um, centers of influence, this kind of was right in my wheelhouse because I built my business pretty much based on referrals and networking opportunities. And I was doing, you know, the, the grind and the hustle back when I first started my agency because, you know, internet leads were a brand new thing. You know, they wanted us to send out, you know, mail pieces in the early 2000s, I guess late 2000s. I didn't see that as a big return on my investment. Um, I've been in sales my entire life and prior to coming to Allstate, you know, I had seven real estate offices with my brother, you know, in two counties. So we kind of knew that we needed to start with those people because let's face it, if you could buy a, um, a home back in 2007, 2008, you know, you were qualified and everybody knew what happened with the real estate crash. So, you know, like I said, if, if you were a, a, a very good buyer to be able to go out and purchase a new home, I thought to myself, well, the credit's got to be good. They're going to buy a home that's going to fit into the sweet spot that you want them to fit into. Chances are they're going to probably have two cars and maybe, you know, a boat or a motorcycle or something in the house. So why not get into the household through the garage, which is the home? So I kind of built my entire business based on uh, number one, real estate relationships and uh, loan officer relationships, because those are the people that are going to be the dirt, the, the bird dogs for you to be able to make that transfer of influence for the specific customer that you're looking for. You know, we're not the 15% or less, we're not gonna be the cheapest, we're not gonna be the least expensive. You know, we're the Allstate brand that's stable, secure. We might be a little bit more, but guess what? You're getting the Allstate name. So I think that goes a long way and, and most customers understand the strength behind a big name. I know there's, you know, farmers agents on here and some other brands, but you know, the strength of the power of the Allstate brand carried a lot of weight with a lot of people. So. I make sure that I emphasize that when I talk to referral partners and that goes a long way. But I, I think the thing that I wrote down here before the call was it's all about the relationship. Everything that you do is all about the relationship. So the old saying that your net work is your net worth couldn't be any truer. And this is, you know, some of the steps and the things that I've done in my professional to career, career to go ahead and, and drive the business. So how can you help out, you know, your real estate friends, or your mortgage loan officers. You know, what can you do to build value? Um, the most important thing you're gonna hear from those people is can you send me a referral for somebody that's gonna get a mortgage or that's gonna buy a home? Well, we all know that we're kind of last in the sales process. So it's very difficult for us to kind of shelf generate opportunities for these folks, unless it comes from a client or a friend that's looking for a real estate agent or a loan officer. But then you get to the point where, okay, out of the 50 of them that I have, you know, which guy do I send it to? So we had to think of a way to be able to build value, try to reciprocate as much as possible, but really understand what it is that a loan officer or a real estate person is looking for, you know, in a network partner with somebody like me. Uh, the things that stand out in my mind that I've heard feedback from all the time, you know, Greg, whenever I need a binder or the deal is tight or the loan to value ratio on the mortgage is really, really tight. You know, you guys seem to be able to pull through at the last minute and get stuff done that nobody else could do. Um, so in Florida, you know, we have 15 carriers that we write through. So that's kind of an advantage. Um, but at the end of the day, I think that it's important that, you know, the ability to have a loan officer call to you directly or one of your staff members and really get that white glove treatment goes a long way. If a guy needs a binder on a Sunday afternoon at three o'clock, 
we're going to get that to him, no matter what it takes to be able to deli deliver him that concierge service. So um, that really stood out to me is the fact that we're very professional. You know, we got things done on time and we never really made excuses. We already, we, already, we wanted to make sure that we met their timeline and educated their particular buyer or their customer during the entire process. Because if we make that, guess what? It's going to reciprocate. And that all falls down to, you know, how the customer sees us as a united team together. You've got your mortgage broker, you've got your realtor, and you've got your insurance professional. So those are all part of a winning team. Um, and also, there are some other ways you can reciprocate. What we try to do is try to get them into other real estate brokerage houses. So if you have, you know, a mortgage officer that says, hey, I'm looking for more opportunity. You know, if you have a real estate office that doesn't have an in-house lender, you know, set up an appointment with the broker, introduce this person that's a trusted advisor that you know has got great rates, that you know gives quality service, and that will go a long way in building those relationships and, time to re and trying to reciprocate, you know, with that person that's been feeding you deal after deal, year after year. So that's one of the things we've done a very good job of. Um, but most importantly, in addition to that, you know, get to know these people for who they are as individuals, <clears throat> right? Take them out to lunch, go to coffee with them in the morning. If they're gonna attend a charity function, you know, go with them. Most of these guys are lone wolves and they, they hunt by themselves, but if you make an offer to, to go with them to a charity function or you're gonna to try to sponsor Habitat for Humanity or whatever the function is, you know, when I first started, I was at every networking function, every chamber event, everything that I could do and, and, and possible, you know, with the time allotted to me to be able to make sure that I was constantly being seen. And your presence is very, very important because the old saying, out of sight, out of mind, it's absolutely true. So you have to be at top of mind. As soon as they think of insurance, they need to think of you. So that's really important. Um, everybody has got a local real estate board inside their community. We happen to have one that I think has got 9,000 real estate agents that's involved in there. All of them have affiliate programs that you can be part of. So the affiliate membership might be $250 for the year, but what, that, what that does that allow you to do? It allow, in our real estate market, it allows you to have a tabletop at functions when they bring in maybe the property appraiser's office or they bring in a legal team to talk about changes to our FAR bar contract or changes to the way that tax deeds are written or, or how they're processed. So every time they have these types of meetings, most of the people at the higher level, you'll see it's the 80-20 rule. Those people are going to these functions to get more knowledge and be at the top of their game. Because quite frankly, most of the real estate professionals are out there don't really know what they're doing. But if you can find that 20% that are consistently doing you know, the listings and the, and the purchases, you're going to learn more about who they are and what they do and what's important to them. So you know, join your local um, real estate board. Um, Okay, one of the things that I did when I was at Craig's office, I think it was last year, um, Keller Williams actually has something called the Market Center. And this is kind of a big nugget you need to take away with because I made some calls in real time um, for some other agents to set appointments with them in Seattle, Washington, and Texas. Most of the Keller Williams offices have something uh, called a Market Center. Now what this Market Center is, is basically a place where um, inspectors, roofers, mortgage professionals, you know, insurance people, can come in and talk about who they are and what they do. They can sponsor breakfast. They can do educational 101s. And if you get inside the market center there, they're going to allocate time for you to be able to do these types of functions. They are very, very big on education and training. So that's right up my alley. So I kind of um, came out with an insurance 101 educational course that I give at their location. It, it takes about 30 minutes to do. But I promise you, if you can deliver and drop some knowledge on real estate professionals that are out there, they don't have to become, um, you know, licensed uh, PNC uh, uh, LSPs. But if you can tell them what's the difference between an HO6 policy and an HO3 policy, when does the customer need flood insurance, what inspections are required, if you can fill them up with knowledge, they're going to look a lot better when they're representing a buyer or a seller. So if you can arm with them with basic working knowledge about the insurance industry, they're better able to articulate things about insurance that maybe a customer is asking them and that builds their credibility. And guess what? You're gonna be the person they always go to when they need insurance information or questions answered. But the single most important thing I've learned is when I went to these Keller William Market Center meetings 
is that all these people are 100% commission, so you need to help them offset some of their expenses. And how are you gonna do that? Well, most of these people work in a farm area. They farm their local neighborhood. They've got a local specialist that's inside their neighborhood. There's probably three or four you know, realtors that you know that live in your neighborhood. They send out the market updates where their neighbor house, their neighbor, uh, their neighbor, their neighbor, Put home sold for dollars. So everybody kind of sees that information, but every neighborhood has something like that. They send out these quarterly updates, and if you can co-brand and co-market with them, that lowers their operating expenses because they're spending a lot of money on marketing. So I always use that as a tool to be able to ask them, hey, if I could lower your operating expenses from an advertising perspective, would that be a value to you? So absolutely, they're going to say yes. So why not use that relationship? and maybe put a cap on it. Our cap is $200. Most of the people in the real estate teams won't do that, but the 20% will, and that's the ones that you have to target. So when you go into these real estate offices, try to identify who's the number one listing agent in there, who's the number one buyer's agent in there. Bring them out to coffee, find out what you can do to help add value to their business. But and most importantly, quote their lines of insurance, right? Ask them if we can quote their home and their auto and their umbrella. If you become their licensed agent and by RESPA regulations, you have to give away three different insurance companies, the lady's going to say, hey, here's the name of three people. Greg has to, happens to be my agent. So who do you think that the buyer's going to go with? They're going to call you. So all these things that you need to do are going to drop seeds you know, along the way for these real estate agents to be able to provide those free leads essentially for you by just going to functions with them and supporting their efforts. And that is one of the lowest cost of acquisitions that you can actually get out in the marketplace because we all know that referrals are going to close exponentially at a higher rate as opposed to trying to buy an internet lead or try to drop 5,000 pieces of mail and hope that you get a 1% return. So this is uh, a time and age where, you know, um, press and flesh, you know, kissing babies, that, that's important. You have to get out there and you got to be seen, you know, in that particular vertical and use your experience, your knowledge to be able to have those people you know, come in and, and refer you business. Um, another one, you know, we just got back into BNI. You know, we were lucky enough to have a BNI that was in our um, and in our neighborhood who actually dropped out an insurance professional. We attended one of the functions. I had been in the BNI before, but just because we got so busy and then one of the BNIs folded, we got back into it. This BNI group had probably 24 professionals in there. It was a group that was dynamic. They wanted to make money. They wanted to refer business over. So every Thursday at 1130, we've got an LSP that's going to attend this BNI function. I think it cost me $680 for the year to join up. But I promise you, this group is going to have a real estate agent. It's going to have people in there that do uh, electrical. You're going to get commercial auto out of it. You might have general liability. So all of these people are going to feed you because BNI only allows one particular um, business of that type inside that group. And if you're missing the boat, if you don't get involved with a BNI, uh, you know, chamber events, I talked about that networking, uh, co-branding and probably one of the best ones that I've, I've, I've always used is uh, new home builders. If you can get inside a new home builder and be kind of the incumbent person that can provide homeowners insurance for the customers that are coming to do the transactions, most of the time, the loan officer that's sitting inside the builder is owned by the builder. Sometimes they have a relationship with a homeowner's insurance carrier. Sometimes they don't. Um, we've taken these guys out to dinners. We've brought bottles of wine over. We've done everything that we can to be the incumbent. And what we did is um, we actually have some cut sheets that we co-branded that we put every single model of the home that they were building we put a price estimate, which is pretty accurate, for each of the model homes. So number one, they're not going to need any, any inspections. Number two, there's not going to be any claims. And number three, you're going to probably be able to pick up the household. So we just went down to Office Depot. We created these, these slicks that are you know good stock. And every time the loan officer speaks to um, the, the buyers in-house, they're going to give them this flyer that's going to show you the pricing. So the one I have is at the Sandhill, the Woodhark, or the Kingfisher, and this is the price for insurance, and it's got our information all over it, and it's co-branded. So why not just go to somebody that's turnkey that's going to be able to provide you the pricing right on the sheet? There's no easier sale than inside a new builder's um, uh, front desk. So that's that's kind of um, you know one of the biggest takeaways that I have. And um, 
that's pretty much about it. I think getting back to consistency, you know, being involved in all the opportunities that they have, you know, speaking on their behalf, doing, um, you know, videos. I do videos probably every couple of weeks that I send to everybody in my database that talks about, you know, why it's important to have flood insurance or if there's a hurricane in Florida coming in the box, you know, it's important you get these, you know, homeowners insurance policies written because if not, not, you're not able to write the insurance to know these things in advance because if there's a closing date that has to be pushed back, it's a big, big domino effect and it can affect a lot of transactions. So again, just being that, you know, local insurance expert is important. Everybody that you know has to know who you are and what you do. I do social. Everybody knows that I'm on Facebook Live all the time. My wife hates it, but it is what it is. <laughs> I get so much business from people that know that I'm an insurance professional. It just comes in all the time. And so my staff gets to benefit from the things that I do. You know, if you're a licensed um, LSP, you have to be on social media because most of the people that work for me are 20 years younger than I am but they have to be on social media because everybody knows at least 200 people. And if the people that are on Facebook or Instagram or LinkedIn, if they don't know who you are and what you do, you're missing the boat. These are all warm opportunities for you to get referral business that guess what? Cost the agency owner nothing. And you might close it at a higher percentage. So I think all those things that we do and that we talk about has been from historical things that we've done over the lifetime of my career, you know, just not only just in insurance, but, you know, I worked in real estate, I worked for AT&T, and I sold everything that you can think of. But um, that's kind of really what I think is the best way to approach, you know, your centers of influence from a very low cost of acquisition perspective. So I hope that was helpful. Um, Let's talk a little guys, more about it, though, before we move on. I got a yeah. couple of questions. First of all, I think what he said about it being a relationship play, that is so true. So many times, agents, producers, they're trying to get in the door with some gimmick or some program that's just going to feed them all these leads. And a lot of times they can get in the door with those things, but to get the consistent level of referrals you're looking for, guys, you got to build a relationship with them. These, these people have to become your friends. They have to be, you know, insured by you, those types of things to really to set that on fire and, and do a good job with it. And I know that, that Greg has done a good job with that. And someone asked about the different types of people. Sometimes guys, the processors can be the true gold mines in a mortgage office because they're the ones dealing with, you know, all the documents have got to be put together for that loan to get closed. So what we do, just, just a couple other tips to add to what Greg was talking about, because I started my business from scratch. If it wasn't for centers of influence, we, we wouldn't be here today. That's, that's how we built it uh, 25 years ago. But getting in the door with them, don't go the last week of the month when they're all trying to get their deals done. Don't just pop in like a lot of the vendors that pop in and try to see you at your office and just annoy you. Set up a meeting with the manager, go talk with the manager, explain what you're trying to accomplish. It's trying to build a referral base. It's trying to help them when it comes to insurance and that you want to go speak at their next meeting and then just go speak. And you can talk about things like credit, flood insurance, you know, how you can be their resource for everything, not just homeowners insurance, but any type of insurance question. I think that's really helped us a lot where we tell them, look, whether it's your grandmother getting into an accident in another state, or you've got a question about something unrelated that, that we're not even talking about this closing, call me. You want them to think of you every single time. They want, the first thought should be you when it comes to insurance and then just build that relationship. Now, a couple of questions that I do have for you, Greg, and we got a bunch of them, so we're just going to answer a couple before we move on. How do you, how do you approach RESPA? You know, there's been questions about this um, in the last year or so, especially when it comes to the value proposition, things that you're doing for the, how do you stay RESPA compliant when working with these people so you don't you know, get yourself into a situation where you've got a problem with that? Yeah, this is just a line item expense. You know, anything that we do from a male perspective, it's just co-branding. So I'm not trading any money for referral business. I'm just advertising. You know, we scaled way back on any types of gifts. I've never really been a, been a big proponent of gifts to real estate agents. Now we write handwritten thank you cards. There's nothing wrong with bringing somebody out to lunch. You can do that. But we have to be within the guidelines so we don't have a problem with that. But again, most of the, the, the advertising that we do is a cooperative branding piece that has their information on there. So they're paying half and we're paying half. So I think that keeps us within the guidelines. And it's up to the real estate agent themselves to be able to give away the three names. That's not us, that, that's, on, that's on the real estate agent. Right, so I would just say everybody's on the call, you know, if you have any questions about that, then get, get with your care, get with your attorney, find out, make sure what you're doing is compliant. You know, for us, what we do, it's all about education. It's all about the relationship. We don't give anything of any kind of value. 
um, other than just being there as a resource for them. And that seems to work really well for us, you know, so um, any other questions in there that we can answer real quick before we move on? Sometimes you saw that maybe. Uh, someone asked about B N I. Oh, okay. Some people asked about B and I. No, it's B N I, Business Networking International. They'll be in your area. Um, you know, you can create power teams and work very close with professionals, see them every week. It is a big time commitment. Uh, I know I've started three B and I chapters in the past. Uh, that's a great source, but I love Greg's tips. That, that, those 20 minutes, we're worth the call. Mm -hmm. So thank you, <laughs> dude. Freaking awesome. And and if you, you don't mind sharing your presentation, I know some people ask about the yeah. presentation. The one on one. Yeah, we, we we'll have that. We can get that out there, but that's no problem at all. Yeah, I'll I'll will let you guys see the slick too with the houses for the pricing for the builders. That that goes off really really well. So I'll I'll, I'll give those to you guys. You can put it up to uploading the files. Okay. Awesome. Well, look, I know there's a ton of questions on this, and if we have time at the end, we can get Greg back involved and ask some more. But but literally, we could we could do the whole webinar and COI. So. I do want to move on. Greg, thanks so much, man. I appreciate that information, no guys. And also, he said something about, you know, he's willing to help other people. At CWC, we have an award called the Al Wiggins Mentorship Award that we give to agents around the country that do a really good job of, of sharing information, helping one another out. And uh, Greg, is he's a recipient of that award because he's done such a great job with that. And, and I would encourage you guys to share things with other people. Collaboration is good. You know, the more you can share, the more you can help other people, um, I think it always comes back full circle and it just makes our industry a much better place. So thanks so much, Greg. I really, Welcome. really thanks for having me guys. Today. And like I said, we will try to get some more questions at the end, but next up, I want to talk to Todd. I want to talk to Todd McLean. He's a farmer's agent from Texas. Uh, a good friend of mine has built a great business. Um, very analytical, very numbers guy, perfect guy for this conversation. And he wants to talk to you about ways to drive your costs down when it comes to direct mail, it does a lot of direct mail. Um, and, and he does things in maybe a unique way with, with uh, agency MVP, a, a program that he's built uh, to help people contact people at the right time. So, you know, again, Todd's another big agent. He, he's done a fantastic job with a relatively small staff. I think he's number one in the state of Texas, but only has a handful of producers, maybe three producers. Three producers. They're doing things right. They're doing a lot of things and writing a lot of business, a lot of volume without just it being a numbers play you know, with, with a bunch of people out there writing business and quoting. So, um, Todd, welcome to the call. I appreciate you being a part of it. I'm going to give you a little bit of time just to kind of go through some tips, some techniques, some things to think about and look for when it, when it comes to direct mail and anything else that you can add to help drive acquisition costs down. I absolutely appreciate it. I mean, how, how I really manage my agency, and this didn't start, you know, from day one. I started from scratch as well. It all began with how, how do I keep more money in my pocket? It drove me nuts that I would just blow all this money. I felt like I, I like to use the term I'm Texan. I like guns. I say spray and pray all the time, right? Um, so I, I got so sick and tired of it that, you know, I did build out my own technology company, Agency MVP. And so let me share. Um, I don't want to go into trying to, to sell you something, but I want to share how, how I drive the numbers to really – fine tune and why I do it because there's a huge reason that a lot of agents, you know, we get so caught up in the day to day. I mean, I have a lot of agents that do direct mail with me that um, don't spend much time at all trying to figure out their numbers and send those over to us so we can make adjustments. So let me show you exactly what I do and let's make sure I can share my screen here. Can you see that Excel? Yep. Yes, sir. Got it. Cool. So what I'm showing you now is um, a report that comes out of my system MVP. And how I've segmented it is, and what I really want you to focus on, this is quote volume per zip code. And what I look at anytime I do any of my marketing campaigns is either my home closing ratio in that zip code or my auto closing ratio. And then what my average savings is in each of those zip codes for each product line. Now, why that's so important is a lot of people, especially in, if you're in a state that has high rate increases because of weather patterns and things like that, what you, a lot of agents don't understand the corporate side of things, reinsurance costs, um, you know, when they buy that policy on reinsurance, why they have to take as much rate as they do, what areas got nailed as hard as others. And there's so many different carriers out there that if you, if you just think um, a lot of people, We'll say, well, I think I'm competitive in these areas. I'm like, okay, well, you just you just think you are, or, or are you really competitive in those areas? 
And so what I do is I track to the zip code level for my quotes, especially a lot of companies, I know Allstate has, uh, you know, a marketing geographic report. Farmers has some geographic reports and other carriers do as well. But the huge problem with those reports is if you have just one mega agent running tons of internet leads in that zip code, they just screwed up your entire data point in that zip code. Does that make sense? So if you have somebody running 5,000 quotes with a 2% close, they're just churning and burning or their internet leads. You can't, you can't trust those reports at all because that's not relevant to what you're doing and where you should be targeting. And so what I do is I look at, um, you know, since I'm talking about direct mail, I'll look at my home closing rate and my average savings in that area. And what I did was I pulled the last report and if anybody in Texas tries to copy me, I did change my zip codes. <laughs> uh, not real. So good luck. Don't chase the rabbit hole. Um, so what I, uh, what I do here is this was, um, it's actually in the same order though, just different zips. And so what I can show you is that zip codes that I did a ton of quotes in after 12 months and rate changes and, and rate environment in our area, there was at least five to six zip codes that I needed to completely shut off. Um, and so when you talk about driving costs in direct mail, direct mail is one of the most expensive customer acquisition costs. However, what I do at this point is, it, you know, it takes me about three months to start getting some real numbers in, but then I'll stop sending direct mail in these six zip codes and I switch to a biannual direct mail drop. And what I mean by that is when people are, you know, they buy insurance two years ago, let's say, their home, rate, uh, their home rate goes up, their auto rate goes up, and let's say they're halfway into their third term on their home, and they decide, you know what, I wanna to try to shop my auto insurance. Well, just like every one of us, we're going to go after the bundle, right? We're gonna get them to cancel their home insurance midterm. So what we do is we do biannual drops, ex-dating, and so I'll send out like March and September at the same time for March ex-dates. When September rolls around, I'll drop September and March X dates. And so what I did is I figured out where, what zip codes my carrier is most competitive in. And then I'll do, once I figure that out, that's when I do biannual drops in that area. Because now I have a higher chance to catch people at the right time that could have switched, that are gonna be the highest closing ratio. Um, and so that really helps me drive costs. The other thing that I'll look at is credit tiers. Credit tiers are really important, um, especially in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. We have a lot of cookie cutter homes that were built in the 80s and 90s where there are 4,000 square foot boxes. And in the neighborhood next door, you might have a 3,000 square foot house that's actual, you know, a nice builder's grade uh, home. And so if you understand where you're competitive based on things like their home, uh, house square foot to home value, and let me get into, I'm kind of jumping around here, but let me go into my sales genie. This is where we pull a lot of our stuff from, but I'll go into sales genie and on zip codes where we, I have them labeled yellow. Yellow to me means, um, you know, I'm kind of neutral on it. I, I, can't, I want to keep targeting it. I want to keep driving it, um, but I might be more conservative when it comes to a lower credit score. And I think everybody realizes that the lower your credit score, the higher your rate is, right? Unless you're in California. And so on, on zip codes where I'm not competitive, I know I'm going to get my butt kicked if they have bad credit, then I'm going to really turn up, I call it strict filtering. So I'm going to get rid of those box homes. I'm going to get rid of older houses. I'm going to get rid of, I'm going to go to that preferred customer, higher credit score, I know the type of house that we need and I filter that in my, uh, my sales genie filters. And then I build another list inside sales genie that is my more, um, more relaxed filters is what I call them. So I don't care if they're cookie cutter because in some zip codes we're, you know, kicking butt on, on closing ratios for non-standards, uh, things like that. So really diving into the numbers, and looking at where are we competitive. Uh, on another point, I know we're gonna get into, somebody else is gonna dive into internet leads,
but I use this exact same thing for my internet leads too. Mm -hmm. Because for auto, I'll know, um, you know which auto zip codes I need to target that I have the highest closing rate in as well. And so knowing my numbers helps me really move on a dime uh, at least once a quarter is when I really dive into these numbers to make some changes. But it helps me spend money in the smartest place possible based on my carrier. Um, let me pull up something else I'll show you. Scripting. So one of the best scripts that we've come up with so far, and I can share this and you, and you can share it with everybody, is really, I always get people that are looking into direct mail and they say, well, I just, I value sell. I don't, I don't sell on price. And you, you don't sell on price with direct mail. You get their attention with price, right? right? So what we have to do is if you're gonna get into direct mail, you have to have the script, the talk path down to a T and you have to have really good closers work these leads. If you don't have a really good closer, I've had so many times agents go, oh, I just hired this new producer. I want you to feed all these uh, leads to that new producer. I'm just thinking to myself, wow, um, you're, you're not gonna make it, <laughs> right? <laughs> these leads are extremely expensive. So you want to make sure you, the agent, if you don't have, if you have a brand new producer, you as the agent need to take the calls or at least, you know, shadow the calls, listen to them, how they're working them because they, you have to have really good closers based on the cost per call. And what we do when we get them in is we talk about, you know, first off, thanking them for the opportunity to quote their house, going straight to what's your home address so we can pull up your quote in our system. And then if they mention the rate at all, we want to attack that rate. And what we say is, you know, the rate you're seeing is the best rate possible we have in your area. What it's not taking into consideration are the consumer reports and claims history that I can't pull without your consent. So what I just did is I totally just blew that up, just like the credit card offers they get in the mail, mm -hmm. uh, right? All those different teasers that they get. And I go, I just really need to ask you a couple more customized questions so I can ensure I protect your property more, you know, customize your quote properly and ask you some extra discount questions. So at, at that point, we totally got away from price and they will bring it up again. And they're gonna bring it up again when you go to close them. Well, your letter said this, if they do that, we go back to, but your competitor is this, right? So based on who you have, what your coverages are, and we use a sales presentation to give them a side-by-side -side proposal so we get into a value sell approach versus a price approach, right? Um, what kind of questions you got? Well, I mean, first of all, I think just a couple things that a lot of times direct mail is really expensive because people aren't doing what you're talking about. You know, they're having to cast such a wide net to get the response. And then when they get the response, their people aren't trained well enough to be able to handle the response. So they look at all the numbers at the end of the month, end of the quarter, like, wow, my ROI sucks because we're not, we're not converting enough. Well, it may not be that the process was the problem more so than the actual act of the marketing itself. So I think if you follow these tips that he's talking about in terms of really drilling down and understanding where to mail to where, mail in a wide area, doesn't make a lot of sense if part of that wide area is going to places where you're not going to win anyways, just to get your numbers up. That doesn't make any sense. So you, you want to mail enough out there, you get enough return, but being smart about it where it's going to the right places. I mean, that's just common sense, but it does take time to drill down to those numbers to understand that. And then you've got to train your staff guys. You can't just turn direct mail on and have people that have never done it before because he's exactly right. You're going to get that objection when they call in, where they just want what's on the, the sheet of paper, what's on the letter. And you got to have people that are trained on well to get through that, you know, just blow through that part of the objection and really get on because he's right. We're still, we're still value selling, but we're like, we're doing the same thing that all the carriers do and all the advertising and marketing they do. The call to action has to be the price because nobody knows anything about insurance. All they know is what they're paying. So we have to appeal to that. So that's exactly what the direct mail does. It appeals the exact same thing that you see all over the, the TV and radio and internet and billboards. We're appealing to what they know is how much they pay. And then when they come in, when they call in, then it's up to us to flip that around. So if you're going to get in direct mail, 
You got to get good at those two things. And, and if you're already in direct mail, those are things you really need to focus on to drive your cost down because you could continue to, to mail to the same group. But if you're having a better conversion with your staff because they're better trained, your cost goes down, right? Or maybe you just refine who you're mailing to, you know, so you're not sitting in such a wide net, you're hitting more specific targets along with some training. And now you're really driving your cost down and, and you're getting a better return. So that's really good information. That's, that's good stuff, Todd. I mean, Todd's been doing this a long time. He's an expert at it. And it's just, it's the little tweaks. A lot of times when we work with agencies, it's not blowing everything up and starting all over. It's just changing little things, the talk path, the process, identifying this or that that can make such a huge difference. And, and that's exactly the case with direct mail. Yeah, there's, there's, there's two other points that I wanted to make real quick. Um, one is I get a lot of agents who, who just assume that if they do a 10 mile radius, that their rates are gonna be relatively the same in that 10 miles. I can tell you, especially if you're in, a, in an area that has weather patterns and, and you know, a lot of cat claims especially, there can be a wide range of rates right next door to you. And the reason being is some carriers base rates on county where others will base rates, underwriting rates on zip code. And so you can find pockets where you will just crush the competition with your carrier because they underwrite completely different. But the, the zip code next door, maybe in a different county where you guys are rating about the same, you'll get your butt kicked if you try to keep marketing there. Right. And so what I tell a lot of agents is, you know, when I hear complaints from agents about how my rates suck, I'm in a terrible area, this sucks, sucks, sucks. I, I always ask them, like, Look, show me your zip code, um, zip code competitiveness where you're looking. They're like, what's that? I'm like, okay, we, you gotta go back to the fundamentals of how, how do insurance companies rate rates and how do you look competitively in each zip code, right? And then the other thing would be your call to action. This is the biggest mistake I see in direct mail. If you don't have something that's gonna catch their attention, that's different, then they're not gonna open up the mail piece anyways. So, you know, you could have a 30 cent mailer that's, but if it's from corporate, people know right. it's a junk mailer, they're just gonna throw it away. So even if you wanna drive your costs down, where you don't wanna drive costs down is the actual mail piece itself you want to catch their attention, get them to open it, and have that call to action there. Let's try to get a couple of these questions before we move on. Just. Yeah, a couple quick questions, because remember, we're going to get to more questions at the end once we uh, wrap up as well. But someone asked a good question about hitting them twice the month before they renew. Packy asks, is it worth the extra expense to try to hit somebody twice the month they renew? I don't think so. Uh, the reason I don't think so is – if your call to action was good enough to get them to open it up, to, to pull it out of that junk mail, they're going to look at it. If, if it wasn't, they're not looking at it. You're going to get thrown away twice, right? Um, that's why I do biannual drops, which is still X dating. Um, and possibly they switched in the, in the middle. You're hitting them every six months or so twice a year. Uh, Chris asked a good question. Do you mail out the same amount each month or do your mail drops change throughout the year? It's based on, so your winter months, which are your lower contact rates, um, you know, less people buy homes, so you have less amount of X dates. So it does fluctuate. And one more quick question on direct mail before we get on to the guys on other lead sources is, Byron asks, what about postcards? Do postcards work with pricing? So postcards, to me, the, the contact rate was pretty dramatic of a drop the last few years. And it, if you think about it, it doesn't get the same amount of attention that a direct mail piece does, which means I, I call it the commitment, like where somebody sees it and then they commit to opening it. So you're going to get more attention mm -hmm. on that open. So uh, I think there's just less commitment with postcards, which will get you less contact rate, which equals less ROI. We found that as well. It's almost like double for the letters. Yeah. And I right. remember years ago, they were trying to say, well, they're seeing your message instantly. They don't have to open it. It works better, but I think when we really started measuring it, that wasn't the case at all. Right. Um, all right, man, good stuff. And again, we'll hopefully have some time at the end to get some more questions on direct mail. But I want to bring Justin in here. Um, Justin and Mark are going to talk about some similar things, but there'll be some differences as well, uh, mainly around internet leads, warm transfers, that type of thing. I know Justin's doing a lot of unique things that are zero cost uh, that he's going to share with you guys. But Justin's another agent in Texas. He's an all-state agent. Um, for maybe a little bit newer agent, but is really doing a fantastic job and has had tremendous growth over the last few years 
um, another good buddy of mine. And uh, just I think a lot of the way he does things, does it the right way, is a great leader, works really well with his staff. Uh, so just another good person to listen to and, and maybe a, a little bit younger voice in some of this stuff. So Justin, let's, let's talk about some of the things that you're doing. Share as many ideas as you can and talk about some of the things or maybe setting your, your leads apart from, from other folks is what you're doing to, to lower your acquisition costs. Uh, the, the first thing I'll say, I think a lot of people just don't X date enough. You know, a lot of times, like what Todd said, they spray and pray and nobody follows up after that. You know, the, um, that every time he's dropping those lists, direct mail, we do a lot of direct mail ourselves. but you go through those calls and you can actually X date. Anybody's got a number, things like that on do not solicit, be reaching out to those people. You drop them a mail piece. Maybe you reach them before they even open it, those kind of things. Um, but X date's big as we go through here. Um, one thing that we do in our office, it's kind of fun is a referral, um, competition is what we tell the, um, either the service prospect or service customer that we're dealing with or prospect, you know, Hey, I'm trying to um, compete against my other agents in the office and they, we need one more referral. I need one more referral to win today. And we can do that on 30 calls throughout the day. And I'm going to pay $20 if they need it, but I actually don't even say that we'll pay them for it. So they go ahead and if they give us that referral, it's great a name and a number. And then we turn around and tell them to text that person. We're going to give them a call within the next 10 minutes or so for a quote. Um, if it takes, you know, what's in it for me, $20 American Express gift card from National Gift Card is a great place to get those from. They're um, with us. We're with Allstate. So it's Allstate branded. You can send those out. Um, raffles on Facebook, things like that have always been huge for us. We put a number on it. Um, if we're going to give something big away, a $500 cooler or iPad or what have you, we'll say, you know, it needs to be 25 homes. The first first 25 homes get entered into the draft. Well, it's like a cash for quotes program. Um, it will cost you some money to do that, but they're great. Um, the other place we do raffles outside of grocery stores, Walmart, if you think of, the one thing to think about is where Girl Scout cookies are set up at. That's a lot of places we'll do those things at. Um, you do pay a little bit more for those kind of raffles and stuff. You need to make it fun. Um, a cooler will be 500 bucks for a Yeti cooler. That's a big thing in Texas that we do a lot. Um, some of the free things that I've seen that um, buddies of mine do here in the area, as well as we're trying to build a program around it, is mortgage home tour, uh, partnering with a mortgage broker to do a home tour. Um, and what they basically do is they run a bus every week and they'll look through the MLS, which is our um, home organization or association here in Texas. They will go through and pick out 30 home or 10 homes in the last 30 days that have not sold. And what they're doing is trying to help those realtors understand why those homes haven't sold yet. So they'll call and they don't know the realtors. They'll call and invite them to, Hey, we do this home tour every week. And we would like to have you on our bus and show you kind of get 10 other real estate agents um ideas and suggestions about your home why if the price is high or what have you that has turned out to be great for a good buddy of mine down in austin and he says that every out of every 10 referrals or uh, realtors that they meet two or three of them have now become their partners over the years and they literally reach out to him as a resource uh, for whatever it may be austin's got a big flood issue they'll call him for that all of a sudden they're calling him on the first home or second home they've sold a lot of these realtors are newer realtors um, that maybe haven't been in the game long. So they're, they don't have a relationship or a resource in the insurance industry yet. So that's a great place to pick those up. Um, a cookie run, um, mortgage brokers and all that, they can't get anything, even giving them cookies sometimes. I think it may fall into that RESPA issue. Um, but find a reason to go by and see them, you know, and if you can't go by and see them, um, one thing we do is X day. We're big on our software of just following up with everything, not just prospects for home and auto. We will X day or, um, anyone that sends us an EOI, you know, your service team all day long is changing out homes, um, for either refinance or what have you. your sales team. When they sell a home has to do it, ask them who the realtor and mortgage person was and did they like them and would they recommend them? We're always looking for really good people. Now you've got a name to reach out to that person and say, hey, I just um, insured Miss Smith's home. She mentioned you're a great mortgage broker in area. I'd like to introduce myself, tell you what I'm good at. And what I'm good at is a newer roof. So if you've got a 1969 house, but it's got a newer roof, give us a call. We'd love to take care of that person for you. 
Um, those are things that you can do for free that you're just putting right there in your um, X8 follow up and process throughout the year. Reach out to them once a month. They're huge, especially those processors Craig mentioned. If you can, that's normally who sends over the email for the request for evidence of insurance. Follow up with them. Be funny either through your email or just find a reason to call them and kind of make them laugh, build that relationship, and follow up with them a month later and say, hey, how'd everything go with Miss Smith's closing? Oh, it went great, yada, yada. And that's how you build that relationship and keep that moving. Um, the quotes for cash thing, I use a lot, and I use it, I think, outside the box with everything we do. Um, a full service car wash down the road from our office uh, runs about 300 cars an hour through that place and every one of them sit for 30 to 45 minutes. And so with that, they, they're paying 20 bucks on average, 20 to 25 bucks for a car wash. And so if you're, you set up, you know, normally they don't care because that the manager of the car wash or what have you just ask them, can I set up a little table here with my computer on Saturday um, and just ask people if they like a quote. And if they, if you're not getting much traction, tell them you'll pay for the car wash. You know, basically give them a twenty dollar gift card, twenty five dollar gift card. Here in Texas, that's the most we can do. You you may check with your um, local state and compliance issues and all that, but um, here we can give up to twenty five dollars to entice a quote. Um, so you could do that. It pays for their car wash. They're sitting there for thirty minutes, looking awkward with everybody in the lobby. Anyways, might as well do that. Um, a couple other places we haven't tried yet that we want to try is um, your service quick lubes, your oil changes. Um, big dealerships are always good. We're always trying to market to them anyways, but they have service departments, which normally have pretty big lobby areas. Go in there, try the exact same concept. Um, those have been our best. That was the first thing I did out the gate um, when I started and we actually went away from it. I'll, I'll almost say um, direct mail will make your team lazy sometimes. <laughs> so um, don't get too deep on one source and kind of create um, a broad area just like right now everybody's trying to figure out better acquisition costs things like that don't get away from some of those things actually teach that to your team and how to do it and i think if you'll develop your team and seeing that and how they can be better at it whether they stay with you or they move into a different industry they're going to love the fact that you taught them that um and, and honestly i think we all just get away from that and that's something we all should get back to is doing those things there in the community they really don't cost much. And like that, I would start with the car wash of not even offering the free car wash, just seeing how many people you can do because at 300 an hour, two or three of them definitely want to talk to somebody. Um, it's in regards to your home or auto insurance. Um, same goes with the uh, realtors and mortgage brokers, exdate them to follow up. Um, even though, you know, they may not number one, be willing to talk to you, look them up. Like Greg was saying with Keller Williams and they have a fantastic training program. Be a resource to those agents. Just tell them, Hey, I'm a local insurance agent. Jump on that. That is a huge thing that you can do for free. It doesn't cost you anything. And it's a phone call that you can do from your office. Um, again, with the quotes with cash, the little league teams, cancer walks, all that you're, you're, we bought a big check to have in our office whenever we do these cancer walks and other stuff, they come in, they ask you, you know, Hey, ha can you sponsor my little league team? We just want $25 or what have you. And I tell them, look, we've got an unlimited opportunity that's quotes for cash. If you can get us some names and numbers, we quote them. You get $20 every time we quote them, every household. We don't do it per quote because then it can get a little bit crazy, but we do it per household, whether they get a home or auto quote, we normally are going to try and bundle that quote both. Um, the first, person that ever did it was a little girl that was trying to go to a cheer camp. And if any of you've done the cheer camp thing, it's apparently extremely expensive. She went out and raised $1,800 in two weeks. Um, she called all her mom. She was about nine years old. She called all her mom's friends, family, all that stuff, and just got out there and really worked it. That one does cost you some money, but those X dates, we're still selling stuff to this day on that. And that was 2012. Um, so try, and again, with that stuff, make sure you're X dating. I can't say that enough. I hear so often people buying leads and all this, they try them once, they don't have a good X state process or any of that. So make sure you're doing that. Um, uh, thinking outside the box with these vendors. So here in Texas, it's it, it's a racket, 100% with lead vendors. Um, whether you're buying data leads, you're buying um, live transfers, what have you. I think live transfers the other day with data lot was $253 for a home. So, and they just know what they're doing. They're, it's insane, honestly, <laughs> but what you can do with those 
sometimes you have to buy those. If you get into December and you're trying to get an extra push or what have you, and you, you're looking for everything to do, live transfers is something to always fall back on. But think outside the box and help your team understand like, hey, we got to be a little bit different to afford these. We sometimes we'll buy leads from eight to nine in the morning. Most agents don't get on until nine o'clock in our area. So we'll tell that lead vendor, hey, how many calls could y'all get during that time? If we picked them up, could you do it for a set price? Because um, a lot of times you get into a bidding war with these other agents and things like that. Some of these vendors will actually slow down and say, hey, for 35 bucks a pop or $30 a pop, if you'll take everything from eight to nine, we're good. And usually it's only five or 10 leads in the morning, but they're not bad. They're, they've either called you before work, before they're sitting in traffic and all that. Um, same thing goes on the other side of it. Um, 5.30 to 7.30 has been huge for us. Um, and we, we tried it with one vendor. I just threw it out. I said, hey, how many calls you guys get after there? Plenty. They're like, we can give you as much as you want. I said, give me 10 at first. And now we take 20 a week um, between that time. But we have to tell them a week in advance. So if I'm going to have somebody stay on next Tuesday from 5.30 to 7.30, I have to let that vendor know so that they can prepare and make sure they have people on. Um, but we, we get them to a set price. I can't stand the bidding war. I won't do any vendors with the bidding war. So um, that will kind of help you control your cost. And the moment that it, they start getting a little awry, just call them and say, hey, I don't want anybody over 65. I don't want anybody that's not a homeowner. If you like, if you need more than a couple cars because it just doesn't make sense, tell them, look, I want all your over two car households, whether they rent or not. Um, that's a good one that a guy here in Texas actually shared with me. So um, that's another good one. Um, Saturdays and Sundays. It, a lot of times, for the longest time, I've never worked Saturdays and Sundays, and it's just a thing of mine. But I had a lot of people that, like younger people that are working with me that are like, hey, could I work Saturday? Would you buy leads? And so we started trying it. Those work fantastic. Um, you can actually beat them down a little bit on price as well. You know, one of them that we beat down recently was at 65. We got them to 30. Um, so just to take Saturday calls between 10 and 2. Um, your team will pick up a little bit more. They can be more focused then. That's a really good one to try. Um, the last one on our mailers, to talk to Todd's point, mailers are a big deal. Um, they're very expensive. The, you got to really target everything. So you want your best closers on that. The only way you get to answer a um, mailer in my office, because it pops up and tells you, and it rings to um, the top people from the last month. So if they sold over 40 items or more the previous month, they're in that ring group for the first 30 seconds. They get the first opportunity at that. And those are the best closer. It also motivates the people for the next month mm -hmm. as they're going through there. They're sitting at 35, 36 items. I want to get over 40 to make sure I'm in that ring group. Um, and not that we get a ton of, ton of calls every day off of those, but when we get them, they're pretty, they can be lay down sales if you're a good closer, um, because you can lead with liability and you can do everything that you want to do based on the principles we're learning here with CWC. Um, and two role plays every week we role play either on ALR or on just a call at 8 15 in the morning. We get in early and do a zoom meeting with everybody and we role play just one call. We take that call and talk about where we could have found um, ALR opportunities, you know, looking at their age, going through and seeing their mortgage. Um, and in regards to the mortgage, we just ask them straight up at that point when they say they have a mortgage, do you, um, do you have mortgage protection? You know, those are things that I think at the end of the year, all of us would pay enormous amounts of money for ALR because we're trying to hit out our bonus. But that's something you can do throughout that call that costs you nothing that would kind of, I guess, make your cost of acquisition a little bit better in regards to ALR. Um, spot checking is the last thing that I'll talk to. Make sure you're working with your team and spot checking daily or weekly, at least, that they're quoting things correctly. Um, a lot of times it's not the terrible lead source. It's not that mail sucks. It's none of that. It's you haven't spent enough time with that person to develop them, to teach them how to declare um, insurance, all that. And those are things that are 100% free to you to sit down and spend a little time with them, listen to their calls, sit next to them, actually work with them and develop their quoting process. And that's all I got. Good stuff, Jess. You know, and what I heard a lot is, you know, getting back to basics, guys. You know, I think what he, he actually said it, it, where a lot of staff, they just get spoiled on leads, you know, and then you've got to make adjustments for whatever reason. And they're like, well, what do I do now? Getting back to the basics is just the little things that don't cost you any money at all that are maybe just thinking outside the box a little bit and doing things a little bit different, pursuing those opportunities where there's zero cost. 
you know, that's significant. And that's, and that's one reason why he's done so well. So um, appreciate you, Justin. We're going to get to your questions in just a minute. I want to get Mark in here last, last but not least. That's Mark right. Mercer, the beautiful Mark Mercer. Look how handsome he um, is. Yes. Look at him his whole life. Um, <laughs> don't call Justin on his hat, but me on my hair. All right. I see it. We love Mark. Mark's great. He's he's been a part of what we've done for a long time. All just yep. just helping awesome. helping other people and really been engaged. And um, Mark's another great owner uh, that has just built a great business. Has a couple different models where he's got an established location and another one where he's on enhanced commission. So he's he's working you know both sides of that and knows both worlds. And he's just a wealth of knowledge in terms of what he's been able to do to build the teams necessary to scale that out like he has over the last several years, both in the established and the the enhanced location. So Mark's going to talk to you about, you know, leads, you know, generated leads in terms of uh, web, tra web leads, tra warm transfers, those types of things, and maybe give you some tips on what he's doing to lower your acquisition costs and in that general area. So, so Mark, it's all yours, buddy. Appreciate it. Thanks for the uh, kind intro. Um, hey, my, my name is Mark Mercer, as uh, Craig said. I'm going to kind of go over a little different curveball than everybody else. I am terrible at mail and uh centers of influence have never worked for me so i i was writing notes as i have no great stuff it's awesome so those are where i need to improve on um what we do a good job of is believe it or not those ugly internet leads and live transfer leads that we all hate um i was looking at my numbers actually i gotta i'm looking away i got a pen and paper over here uh almost half of our new business last year were internet leads and life transfer leads and I think when we think about those, we need to have a, I'm just gonna start with the mindset and then I'll get to acquisition costs and all those things that are important. Um, we always assume that they're strictly price. We always assume it's 25, 50, 10. We always assume the worst, I did. Maybe it's just me. Um, we've created a different culture that that's not the case. Uh, we've created a culture that these clients are sticking um, and we coach daily on getting these clients to close. So let's get into the nuts and bolts. Um, let's get to cost. My biggest is I went to open ECP and I knew we had to do more business. I kind of, I was out of the internet league game. I didn't really know what the hell I was doing. I would do the all state costs to share stuff. And that was just a lot of money. What I've learned throughout this year is talk to reps. You go to CWC, there's going to be a thousand reps. Go talk to them, go get a beer, have a conversation. Um, if you're working with the right rep, it's a relationship, it's a partnership that they're invested in you. I have a couple reps, I have their cell phone, we can text. When things aren't working, we have conversations. Whether it's about quality, whether it's about cost, um, where we, maybe it's not their fault, maybe it's not the right part of Indiana. And we work on that. I mean, we literally, as, as I think Todd was going over zip codes and he said, my internet lead companies know what zip codes are best in Indiana. They know this because I give them the data. So sometimes I see on, on Facebook, like, oh, internet leads suck. And I'm like, okay, there's some truth there. But what are we doing to work with those vendors? So have conversations. If you see a rep that does not want to participate in that, well, that's like any other relationship. What's the point? So that's going to help you lower your costs on that end. Um, have an honest conversation. Second, I'm a big fan of buying in bulk. And what I mean by buying in bulk is we all have Costco and Sam's. And by the way, bulk doesn't mean to be an insane amount of money. But instead of using five different internet lead companies, use one. Find that one guy or gal that works best. And if you have a, if you have a thousand bucks a month, that's your internet. Okay, that's fine. Make that thousand go as far as humanly possible. Instead of trying to go 300, 300, 300, spend a thousand with one. Um, they are looking for deposits. So I have honest conversations with them about around that. And they're honest. I mean, these guys, it's like us. If I sell an auto at home and they, they terminate in 90 days, I don't make any money. My internet lead companies are making a lot of money off me because I renew. Every month I keep going, keep going. So they want to keep me so we have honest conversations. Um, also, I think the biggest you know, thing is when we talk about cost of acquisition, um, we're talking about sales. So, you know, Todd does a lot of mailers. I know Justin kills it in mail. That's a different conversation than an internet lead conversation. And we need to coach our team different. Here's what I mean by that. If you call me because of one of Todd's great pieces of mail or something Justin puts together, cool. Your 
pre, you're ready to have a 30 minute conversation. You're expecting it. You're expecting the liability. You're, you're in. So really my wholesale is I need to sell you on the coverage and protection we offer. And I need to sell you an all state and me and hopefully close the deal. It's great. When you have an internet lead, this person put their information in God knows where could to be went to win an iPad or who knows they're about to get 92 phone calls <laughs> and they are bombarded with conversations. So you have about 30 seconds to, to connect and to make them stay on the phone. If you fail in the 30, they're gone. So we coach on that every, I've got my team, Michael, Hannah, those are my, call my managers. We have conversations around them. As soon as that person picks up the phone, they want to hang up the phone because you're number three. You better be there quick, but you're not one. It's, we wish we were one. So we coach on things like, so what do you say when they say, I didn't request a quote? Are your producers starting it with um? Are they starting with a long, awkward pause? Or are they confident? We make a joke out of it. I mean, this is, we're just balling here for some things we'll say. I get it. Greg happens all the time. We get people to say, didn't request a quote. Awesome news. Last person who told me that, I was able to double the coverage and save them some money. How about five minutes and I'll find out. Again, it's not going to take five minutes. They're not starting a stopwatch with me. But once I say that, they're interested. Or... Don't, you know, I just kind of, I laugh about it. I mean, we, we just try to make light of it. You're for, I tell my sales producers, there's two sales on an internet lead. There's the sale to keep them on the phone and there's sale to close the deal. Not sure. That's the two sales. And I, guys, I promise if you start coaching on that, you, you're going to close more deals, which then lowers your acquisition. Nobody complains about spending X on an internet lead if they're closing deals. Um, so just certain things that bad habits. Um, and this is all the stuff we did. Like we used to say, like you're getting an internet lead and they're like, I didn't request an internet lead. And the first things out of your mouth was, well, my system says, they don't give, they don't give shit. Hell, sorry, I cleaned it up. They don't give a crap what your system says. So don't say that. Just, we try to make it light. Um, we, and, and as Justin was hitting on, one thing to keep in mind with an internet lead company is if they're giving you legit people to talk to that you're quoting, you're buying data that maybe data doesn't close today, but if you have a CRM, data closes later and it's free. So when I see Craig and Joseph talking about not, you know, their marketing costs going down, part of it is I'm guessing back in the day, maybe there's some free data they gather. I'm just assuming, Greg, I could be completely wrong, but this is stuff that they continue to extinct. So if you're two years in as an agent, it's hard to have a ton of free data out there. So you have to invest in the front end. Um, you just, you've got to treat the conversation differently. And then once you get them in, the thing we tell our people, so we always think they're in a hurry, just slow down. I mean, I'm going back to coaching. We just slow down. And we go right into liability. We don't do 2550. Now maybe I'm not gonna get them to 255, but we're gonna have a conversation. Um, talk to your vendors. Um, at the end of, I mean, I'm circling back, but every, I would say every 90 days, every 60, 90 days, I'm having conversations with them. I'm pulling up agency zoom. I'm pulling up my CRM. I'm running the numbers. Um, I have, a, I had an internet lead vendor. I actually saw in Vegas. I, you know, I'm not going to get in the names. Doesn't matter. And he came up. He's like, how are things going? I'm like, honestly, they are horrendous. I'm like, I've given you guys every nickel I can. I said, I'm just, I'm out. I said, you know, I'm just, I'm not going to blast you on Facebook, but. And to his credit, he's like, give me 90 days. I'll dive into your account. I'll do whatever. And they're my, they're my favorite internet lead company right now. Doesn't mean they're the best. I just find the right guy that will want to work with me. Um, you know, I think also, you know, a big thing is when we get that call, that internet lead call. And I'm just, guys, I'm, gonna, I'm not a great numbers guy, meaning I'm not, I, but I'm, I'm just going to tell you what has succeeded for us in closing these deals. Um, is get is coaching it just making sure you're coaching different conversations um, and keeping them on the phone like one thing we'll say is hey great news Todd if you stay on the phone with me now you're gonna avoid those other 45 phone calls and we laugh it's true <laughs> I mean it, it's true um, we try to make it personal we try to connect um, everything we can because again we have 30 seconds to do so 
Um, but it is important to know your numbers. I have wasted more marketing dollars than I know what to do with throughout my 11 years as an agent. Spray and Pray was a business plan I'm familiar with. I think it was <laughs> But when, right now, I'm down to three vendors that I, I've got a good rapport with. It doesn't mean that, by the way, these three vendors are going to work in your state. Everything's different. That's right. So I don't want to go to the sound of vendor conversation, but I built, like Greg said, build relationship with realtors. It's awesome. I hope to be better at that, but I don't, I'm not. So I have relationship with my vendors where we can have conversations. Um, and you know, I, I think the thing that's important is you need is, is going back to just making sure your team has a script that they know what they're doing. The internet lead pops up, you know, it, it's a different conversation. Um, it, it, you really need to coach them. I think we get afraid of the word script. So I, I'm more looking at it. The, the quickest way to lower costs is to sell. You know, we get, get leads as low as possible, but the only way your acquisition costs get low is if you acquire. That's and, right. And, and that's honestly what we focus on. And I mean, my team has a script. They have, I mean, again, you can make it, you put your own special sauce and everything, but we have a way that we go about it and we attack it and it attacks the keyword. Um, and one thing I, I think that was a, an, uh, an eye opener for me is as, as Craig said in the, the intro. So I was, you know, I know there's some non all state people in here, but I was an established agent. I was not on the enhanced cop my entire career. I've been on 10 and 10 my whole life. And that's, you know, that's what I was part of. And I got away from internet leads and I got away from live transfers. And then when I got in this opportunity, I was like, all right, I'm going to do a little bit of that. One thing that's great about, I think I was talking to Justin about this, if I wasn't with somebody else, that's really great about live transfers is your producers are getting somebody on the phone that if you have the correct transfer company is going to let them quote you. So when I took my sales team from a very small number to a very large number, these men and women had not quoted a ton of people. So I looked at it as a day of sparring. They sat in the gym for eight hours and they were able to spar. So when that five, six item deal came through at five o'clock, they were sharp. Now I could have had them telemarketing all day on agent at leads, and we do a little bit of that. But my thought was the more people I can have them talk to, the better off they were going to be and the sharper they're going to be. And, and again, live transfers are no different than internet leads you can beat them down on cost if you're an all-state agent typically it's going directly to the vendor because i would never pay 200 dollars from dad a lot or anything like that i always try to go much 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 cheaper because my thing is i want to get as many opportunities in front of my team as possible as cheap as possible and if you have conversations with vendors you can do so and then once they pick up the phone for me that's the opportunity that we coach that we go through and it's a different conversation than a piece of mail. I love Justin's idea of only your top producers getting mail because that's a different deal. Mm -hmm. Internet leads are a different conversation, but we still sell pups. We still sell boats. We still sell 255. There's not a 2550 in my, that's a statement I'm in Indiana, by the way. There's not one of those in my agency that's been written. So you just keep that in mind, coach your team on having different conversations around it. Your sales will go up. It's a different conversation than everything else we do. And also hold your vendors accountable. Have an honest conversations. If you want to see CWC or any event, talk to the guys and gals and have an, you know, see where they're at. Um, I'm happy to answer any questions. I just, that's my two biggest, those are my two biggest takeaways for those. Well, Lou, we, we could talk all day about wh what you're talking about right now. We might even be able to get you, maybe everybody can come back and do a, a, a webinar just on your topic. But <clears throat> we've got about 15, 20 minutes left. I want to try to get through as many questions as we can. And before we do that, first, I want to tell all of you guys, Thanks so much for your help. You know, everybody's on this call. They're doing this just voluntarily, just trying to help, you know, and trying to give you as much information so you can be a lot more successful. So, you know, they, they should get a lot of credit for that, taking time out of the day and, and, and getting on here and sharing this with you guys. So, Joseph, let's just try to bang through as many yep. of these as we can, as quickly as we can with the time that we got left. Uh, Mark wants to know, Mark, do you have an idea of what your normal acquisition cost is per customer, like what you're budgeting to spend per sale or per customer? Sure. If I look at my CRM, my internet, but again, I, I'm, I'm not hundred percent confident in the CRM data just because that means my people were perfect every time and entering in the data, which we're human. Um, it's typically around 250 bucks per sale, per sale, per sale. Yeah. 
And do you also use age leads? Are you dumping those in for them to just call, call, call? Or are they constantly working the leads that you purchased? Joseph wanted to know. A little bit both because I mean, again, we all, we have a budget. We run, you know, and I can't provide unlimited leads that are brand new every day. And age leads are cheap. So again, for me, um, there's a ton of vendors out there. I go for the ones that get me as low as possible and just scrub them and upload and run out. 100%. And one more question for you, Mark, and then Todd, I'm going to hit you with some direct mail ones. Um, would you mind sharing the names of some lead vendors that you like for web leads and live transfers, knowing yeah. that they can be different right. all across the country, right? Sure. Um, I've had, I mean, I've had luck with Everquote. Um, I've had luck with Quote Wizard. And I've had luck with Hall Leads, which is like a new live transfer company I've been using. I've had a little luck with a couple of the live transfer companies throughout the year, but those are kind of, if I look at my, my agency Zoom, that's, that's pretty much the, the, the big three. Thank you. Todd McLean, um, uh, what is the normal contact rate you're seeing, Todd? Is it, a, Jason wants to know, is it like a half a percent? What are you seeing on callback rates? Yeah, I'm, I'm really pessimistic when it comes to callback rates. I'm seeing in the winter months, like we just went through a really rough, I think there was some political stuff going on that caused a lot of that too, but it was it was a quarter of a percent contact rate during November, December is pretty tough for us. Now we're back into about a half percent to three quarters of a percent. Um, obviously I'm not pretty. So if you're pretty on your mailer, you might be at 1%. Put your uh, wife on there, buddy. Yeah. yeah, put your wife on there for real. <laughs> like that's real talk. Um, <laughs> we did. <laughs> now everybody's gonna be stalking your Facebook, dude. But I don't know what you told her. Uh, you must be closer. Your billion, you're a closer. <laughs> uh, but no, real quick. Um, somebody <laughs> asked earlier, and I, I, I can't find it. But someone asked, "Can you share an example of your mailer, Todd?" And by the way, I'm. I want everybody to know that Todd did a webinar with us a couple months ago. Yep. It's at craigwigginscoaching.com slash mail. So it's our website, craigwigginscoaching.com slash mail. There's a recording there. But Todd owns a company called smarketingmail.com. You know, I'm okay plugging that. We're actually doing a drop now yep. um, for one of our LSPs. We're doing a drop for Beth. We want to see how Beth, if she's the only one getting calls, will work a, a drop just for her. But anyways, I wanted to plug smarketing mail.com and somebody did ask for an example it, yeah, it, on the website. oh it's on the website okay marketing mail.com would you chat that out dude sure oh, it, it, now question. that also something with uh, direct mail pieces so that's our previous ad copy okay um, we're exclusive on our ads to a, an agent for each zip code so I don't share our existing copy that we have now and we change that copy every single year to keep it fresh and contact rate up that's actually something i forgot to mention um, if you're doing direct mail make sure your mail pace changes every 12 months if it doesn't you're going to have mail fatigue and you'll just waste a ton of money and a couple of people asked about crms that people use i want to plug todd again you know where, where he got all of his data was from agency mvp.com we use follow-up tool and are really happy with follow-up tool, but agency MVP is slick yeah. and it has so much data that your producers can add in there. I know that others use Rico, other use Allstate Lead Manager. What I would say is whatever system you guys are using, like Justin was really saying, X day, X day, X day, make sure that your staff actually use them. <laughs> That's the big thing, that they're not using sticky notes, notepads, all that junk. The data has to go into the system. And that's honestly how we survive. We survive on requotes, winbacks, cross sales, all that free data, you know, and we're still closing leads that we bought in 2011. That's right. You know, Beth loves it, man. Whenever she closes one, her first year was 2012. And she'll say, I got another first year lead meaning she closed it six years later now. But anyways, you know, Todd McLean's agency MVP is amazing. We use follow-up tool. Others use others like Ricochet. They're fantastic. We love the guys over at Rick Ricochet. Um, I had a question for Justin Slocum. Uh, somebody asked about car dealerships, and now I've lost it. There's so many questions. Somebody asked about car dealerships. What could you say to kind of maybe get into a car dealership? Go buy a car. Go buy a car. <laughs> no, no, seriously, you just go in and um, tell them how you can be a resource to them. One thing I use here in town, we've turned into a teacher of the year program. The Rockwall dealership here in town does a teacher of the year program where we put money up for a sponsorship. They give them a lease car for six months or what have you. 
but I'll go in occasionally and just um, talk to their sales team about how they can drive down insurance costs on our end to help their salespeople sell stuff. So basically talking about deductibles, a lot of these people are going in buying a $50,000 car. Well, they've only had a $250 deductible all their life. Well, if they'll move that a little bit, then they can bring that their cost for that um, payment down. That makes sense. Like whenever they're they they say, you know, they do the four square in the, um, the sales presentation, they're trying to figure out payments um, versus uh, how many months and the price of the car versus the percentage and all that. And they're trying to find somewhere in that four square to land that customer. Well, the one thing they can do is say, Hey, if I could get you $50 savings, you know, on your insurance, maybe we can make this product, this car work for you. Cause that's the car they want. They don't want to go down to the next level down or the next model down. They want this car. So we, we will have that talk with sales team and telling them how they can tell them to talk to their insurance company. What we're also hoping for is maybe that sales agent will just pick up the phone and call us and let us know. Good stuff, man. Thank you. Now, Greg, Mr. Blanchard, um, I have a couple questions for you. Someone asked, how do you get into the market space with Keller Williams? What would you recommend if they're interested in trying to break into that Keller Williams market space? Hey, so have them call me. I'll do a call like I did in Craig's office live in front of the, in front of the agent. I'll do, do a tandem call with them and show them how to do it. And then we can record it and put it on the platform. That way everybody can hear it. It would be kind of cool. We did it live in real time. And I think we set two appointments uh, that day. I think one for Monica in Tampa and then one for uh, Michelle in Seattle. Remember? It was good. Yeah, we, we need to do that. I don't mind doing that. We need to get you up here to film a course too. Would that be good? Hey, send the jet. I'm there, I'm there buddy. In the jet, <laughs> Craig, you got um, another <laughs> question. Big Airlines. <laughs> another question for Greg. Have you ever had any experience with Recamp, which I don't even know if we can really do that anymore. I'd or, kind of stay away from Recamp. Yeah, I'll stay, stay away from, from Recamp. Recamp. Um, let's see here. Renee asked a question. I'll give this to you, Greg. What advice would you have for a new young licensed sales producer that's trying to get their network going? Where would you begin? I would, I would go to a B and I, I would go to the chamber. I would go to real estate companies that actually you can walk into and have that conversation about who you are, what you do. Um, you can, you can bring donuts to rental complexes. You guys have to get out of the office because your ability to meet people and shake hands, people buy from people, right? And once you build those relationships about around those personal um, connections, you're gonna be a lot better off, especially when you ask for referral business. I think that in today's day and age with virtual bots and text messaging, we've kind of gotten away from that one-on-one -on -one relationship. Mm -hmm. And uh, some of my most successful agents, like Aaron and my agency, you know, I say this all the time, you know, he'll talk to a dead person because I mean, the guy will talk to anybody. Somebody who is, you know, we were in a, in a strip center with Mess, West Marine, the boat plaza. A guy had a, has had his boat inside our parking lot. The guy pulled away with the boat and it actually, actually Aaron ran him down and asked him if he wanted a boat quote, but you, you got to open your mouth and tell your people who you are and what you do. And um, you're just going to have to get on the horse and grind because sometimes my people get a little stifled by being inside these four walls. So I encourage them to go to chamber events. I encourage them to go, you know, to charity functions and, 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 and network. You know, there's a big condo, HOA condo uh, function that comes down around here every year. We don't even get a table. They just go and they network, you know, as a participant. So um, just getting out there to Cars and Coffee. You guys know I do Cars and Coffee every month, which yeah. is a local car show. I bring um, Haggerty's tent there. Haggerty, ask Haggerty. They'll give you the tent. They'll actually send you supplies. They'll send you magnets. They'll send you pens. And you can set up a car show, and that's a captive audience. So... Um, you know, getting back to the basics, I think is more crucial than ever because taking away that personal touch, um, you know, removes you from your local community and I sponsor my kids soccer. So I do a lot of different things, you know, um, not just, you know, direct mail or internet. So that's kind of my advice to, to everybody until you sharpen your skill to where, you know, exactly that's your niche and then really focus in on that. Good stuff. Uh, Justin, uh, a couple people asked about the Facebook raffles. Like, are you using something like a WooFoo form for them to fill out their info or just to call you for a quote? How do you kind of structure your raffles? It, it's old school. We have a little bucket on a desk and whenever they get to 25, we throw it in and we do a live presentation when we pull it. So they, you're just directing them to call the agency for a quote to be entered? Oh, yes, in? yes they, they have to call the quote. They have to call the agency and get a home quote. We only do home quotes on those. 
Uh, Mark Mercer, a uh, couple things on leads. Would you mind sharing what your close rate is? Someone want to know. And also, how do you feel your retention is on your ECP book that so much are leads? Sure. Um, as far as what I, first of all, what I pay, I'm, I'm sorry, close rate. Oh, uh, close rate. rate. Yeah. Sure. Um, in looking at it, it's hard to look, we're less than a year in under this whole process, but I would say we're about 7%, give or take on the internet leads, maybe, you know, seven, eight, we're better than we were early on. I mean, when I opened up, it was like Amex card and we just went nuts. <laughs> so we're, we're close and you know, that's just what we did, but now it's getting much better than it was. Um, as far as um, our retention, again, we're year one, so it's hard to give you a true retention. I will tell you what we do to make sure is I have an onboarding specialist, so we're calling them. I'm, I'm meeting with her weekly. So we're making sure that she's checking these policies out. And I'm also not allowing, my, like, we don't write the crap. I mean, guys, like, I got a line, uh, this is all state lingo for the non all state clients out there, but I got a line 19 deal. Uh, it's like, no, when it, you got a home renters? No, we walk it. So, as much as we're doing, we're still writing the right things. And, and again, I said this earlier, I'll say it again, guys. So if an early comes in, they're 2550, we're probably not getting to 255. They're 25. But if we give them to 100, 300, I mean, we, that's, that's a significant increase in their protection. And we educate them on the importance of 255. And then when they renew, my service team better get their butts to 255. I mean, that's just what we do. But really, to be honest, I don't, with, with the internet leads we're buying, if you're doing auto and home, I don't see a difference. I mean, I really don't. And as far as, my, and my service team is amazing. And that helps. All right, so I'm going to pass it back to Todd McLean real quick, and then Craig want to take a final question. And I do want to end on time. If you had questions that we didn't get answers to, feel free to reach out to me or Craig. But I want to pass it back to Todd McLean. He said that he wanted to mention a special. Yeah, so CWC members, we give an extra two cents off every single mail piece forever as long as you're a CWC member. Awesome. Very good. We That's appreciate awesome, that, dude. man. And, and look, I think that the general question, there's a couple of them on there about getting back to basics. And, and guys, I just think, you know, hopefully you got some value out of this call today with these guys about, you know, there's so many people that have they've built their business just throwing so much money after leads and just throwing things up against the wall to, to see what sticks. And I think there's a much smarter way to do it, you know, in terms of how you manage those leads, those direct mail, web leads, warm transfers, but then just getting back to the basics, you know, this is still a relationship business. You know, that's why we're still, if you're in a, a local agency, that's why you're still around. Otherwise this would have been direct a long time ago. I think the relationships still matter and networking with people that can send business to you is very, very smart, but then doing just a lot of the little things to get out in your community, you know, and drive business your way. I think we got to start doing a lot more of that. And, and the cool thing is the more that you do, the more the zero cost stuff you do, the easier it is to continue buying leads because you're going to bring that overall average cost down. And it's just smart business. Like when we're interviewing candidates where we had one last week and we're talking with them, we're setting that expectation that look, we're not going to be able to provide you everything you need to make a living. You're going to have to bring some things to the table. You're going to have to work your personal network. You're going to have to generate centers of influence. You're going to have to ask for referrals, you know, from customers, which we didn't even talk about today. We've talked about that in, in previous webinars, but all these other little things that they do that really helps that, that agency out. And I think it's important to have this honest conversation with your team and let them know, guys, if you want me to continue to invest at a high level in these other areas, whether it's direct mail leads, whatever, I need your help in helping us bring costs down by doing your part on the zero cost stuff. I think that just makes a lot of sense to get everybody on the same page. And you know, there's a lot of training that goes into this. If there's a lot of being just being smart and knowing your numbers so that you can analyze whether it's zip codes or vendors or whatever it may be to just make really good decisions. So again, we want to end on time. I thank all the guys for, for being on the call today and really appreciate you and, and all the information that you share. All these guys are so good about that. Please your, direct your questions back to us though. So we can take that. I don't want to burden them with a lot of questions. Uh, we will take Greg up on his offer uh, to, to get on a call and, and, and do that call and put that on the platform. Um, but hopefully this helps you guys. Hopefully this helps you. Upload those docs to the, to the platform, you guys. I mean, uh, Greg Wiggins' Facebook page. Perfect. You guys well, can download and guys. upload them to the platform if you want. No problem. All Thank right. You. Well, very good. Well, hey, thanks so much for being on the call, guys. You know, if we can do anything for you, 
you reach out anytime. We've got an event coming up in Orlando. If you haven't registered for that, I think there's about 20 seats left for that. If you want to get involved, uh, reach out to us. We'd love to see you there. And, and if not, we'll just see you next time. Thanks so much, everybody.